Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to Him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with His blood He shed, the Bible says, Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket, our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Under the video, I hope you find it to be an absolute blessing. We're a group of Bible-believing Christians that rightly divide the, you know, the word of truth as we study the Bible. And one of the things I'm going to talk about today um, is sin, and pay attention to that salvation message at the beginning of the video, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Jesus, he died, he buried, he rose from the dead, and the blood he shed washes away your past, present, future sins when we don't deserve it. It's like it's being forgiven for sin when we don't deserve to be forgiven. And we're going to cover the word sin in the New Testament today. And we'll start out with some verses, and I'll talk a little out loud, but Romans 4, 8 is probably where we'll start. Blessed is the man to whom... The Lord will not impute sin. So we all have sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. There are no, Romans 3.23 tells us there's none perfect, no, not one. If And, um, you know, that's that's something that's that's there. Um, for It says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so, so we know that we're going to sin. Even as a Christian, you're going to fall short. And the key is not to let sin... And the lust of the flesh rule your life. We, when we become saved, we become righteous only because of Jesus Christ and his blood. Let's look at some more verses. Romans 5.21, That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So not to harp just on your sins, but to be honest with yourself, you need to know where your shortcomings are as a, as a Christian. Have a tongue that talks too much and hurts others. Uh, a lot of people gossip. You know, that could be what people do. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means that's a sin that God wouldn't want us to talk about other Christians or other people negatively because it could affect, it could in fact uh, be a sin and it can in fact cause a lot of problems. But, you know, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. You're, you're, you're as a new Christian, you have challenges. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a Christian of 20 years, you have challenges. And these challenges are to love one another, love your neighbor as yourself, and to, for example, love your wife or your husband. Uh, the way the Bible instructs, uh, even when it's difficult to do at times. Romans 6.6, 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, with Jesus. So this old flesh, this old man, the sinful body nature that we have, that the, it continues, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So we're not to serve sin in our walk of life. Doesn't mean we're not perfect. Doesn't mean we don't sin. It just means we're not serving sin. Or Romans 6.10, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Verse 11, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead 
indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So spiritually, you know, our spirit, our soul is alive in heaven. We're no longer, sin is no longer accounted to us when we deserve, well, we, we don't deserve that, but that's the case. Romans six twelve. let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye shall obey it in the lust thereof. So that means that if we turn our, our ourselves, our, our mind, our thoughts to the world and away from Jesus Christ, that sin, even as a Christian, can rule and rule over us and make us a prisoner when we should not be. We should be set free from that. And we are by the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to let go of the things in the past that if, you, if you're beating yourself up over them, need to forgive yourself and realize that God has forgiven you. All sins are truly against God. Yes, you can hurt another fellow man, but um, that's a different thing than I'm talking about sin against God. It, and, and sometimes when you do hurt man, you do sin, you will sin against God, right? If you lie to someone, that's a sin against God. 13 of the same chapter of Romans 6 Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteous unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as though those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So, you know, we are we are called to do righteousness in, in, in our walk. And verse 14, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. We know that by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, verse 18, Being that made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. So our, our goal as a Christian is to become more like Jesus, to walk in righteousness, not into sin. And Ephesians 4, 26, but ye, be ye angry. So when you get angry and sin not. So can you keep control of yourself when, in those moments that you get heated, when you get anger, angry at somebody? It's easy to have somebody make you angry. And in fact, an angry is a normal, is a normal thing. You know, when somebody blasphemes, blasphemes the Lord Jesus Christ, I get angry. But how do I react to that? Do I sin as well? Do I let that anger make me sin? So, and it continues to say, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So, in other words, solve these issues. Don't anger. Uh, learn to control your actions. One of the things of a, of a Christian that you come to understand is, is things in this world are going to happen. And you can't control those things. But what you can control is how you react to them. And is it in a righteous, godly way? That's a question to ask yourself. Anyway, God bless. Leave your prayer request below and have a great day.